It's the traditional Christmas dinner, but have you ever given much thought to where your turkey comes from? Farmer Matt Carter is giving his customers a very clear insight, offering them the chance to not only hand-pick, but feed, look after and name their turkey all before it's slaughtered for Christmas. As you can imagine, this initiative hasn't gone down well with vegans, who have accused him of being a murderer and a psychopath. But this is, is this just another example of militant vegans going too far, or might they have a point? Well, we're joined by Matt now from his farm in in Exeter alongside Vegan and Made in Chelsea star Lucy Watson. So welcome to both of you. Okay. Matt, we'll start with uh, you. All started with a post on Facebook. Yeah, um, I was out feeding the turkeys one day and I just thought it would be a nice idea if I um, allowed people to come and see them and meet the turkey and then possibly name it. And so... so I put the post on Facebook and... Um, I've got, the, I've got the post here. It says, come and pick your own Christmas turkey at the farm shop. We'll put a name tag on it. You can come and feed it, help look after it for the next two months. You won't need to get involved in any of the difficult bits at the end. Uh, we'll even bonus stuff it for you when you come and pick it up in time for Christmas. Um, and uh, so what sort of reaction did you get? Oh, we had, we had, we've, had a, we've had a lot of people take us up on the offer. And then we also had a lot of people who were... Um, a, violently against against us and they didn't want us to do it and they wanted us to take the post down. How did they it, show it their viral. violent Within opposition? not very long it was seen by half a million people. Uh, it started on just uh, keyboard warriors from behind their keyboard uh, typing messages and then we started getting a few phone calls and then we had a graffiti across the front of the doors of the farm shop and then um, a, a few of my members of staff started to get targeted via their own social media so they obviously looked them up and then targeted them. Uh, you've, you've said, though, perhaps what they don't realise is that they've, they've done you a massive fa uh, favour. Your sales have gone through the roof. For the last couple of years, you've sold 1,000 turkeys, but this year you're, you're double that at 2,000. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, for us, it's been, it's been, they've done us a big favour. Um, I mean, the fact that I'm on TV talking to you today and showing you my turkeys is, uh, is good, really. Uh, um, can, so, just from your point of view, why do you think it's a good idea to name your turkey and get involved in the final couple of months of its life? Well, uh, I'm a father and my, uh, my children, I want them to know where their meat comes from. I want, I want them to understand what, what it's about being a farmer and also not just thinking that the food comes out of a packet in a supermarket. I want them to understand. And if they then make an informed choice, which Lucy's obviously done to become a vegan, then, then they've made that on an informed decision. But I, I don't think they should be making that decision blind and not knowing that their meat comes from animals. And, and how are your children with that? Because I'm, I'm not a vegan, but to, to sort of strike a bond with, a, with an animal and name it... I can't imagine doing that with my daughter and sort of almost acting like it's some, a pet or, you know, something that you're fond of and then the realisation of what actually happens to that animal. How, how are children with that? Yeah, the, the, whole, the whole naming thing was slightly taken out of context. The naming, the naming thing was written when I was out in the middle of the field feeding them and I meant we'll have to name the turkey so you'll know that turkey belongs to Mr and Mrs Smith. Um, that turkey belongs to Mr. and Mrs. Stone. So it's not... It wasn't... Although some people have named them and come up with names for them, that, but, but the fact still remains the same, that people should know where their meat comes from, and if you're going to buy meat, then, then why, not, why not know that it's come from an ethical farm that's well looked after and the turkeys have been free-range and had a good life? Can I ask a question? Yeah, go yes, for it. Of course. Um, what, what do you mean by ethical, exactly? Well, been well looked after. We, we, they're free range. They're, they're slaughtered humanely, in, well, and and looked what, after the best way what possible. What is a humane slaughter? Exactly. Huh. Well, the, in the in the most stress-free possible. What does that entail? Well, it entails killing the turkey. But you, how, there's no other way of that? giving you Christmas dinner without killing the turkey. Just out of interest, how do you kill the turkey? Just, out of it, just genuinely you curious. You slit the turkey's throat. OK. Um, Lucy, you um, obviously, you know, we, we get, see the point that you're, uh, mm -hmm. that you're making there. Um, yeah. Is there any 
area here that you agree with Matt that it's quite important is it, it's it's very European the French are very good at this and that okay. you know you have a relationship with your food you know where it comes from you can make an informed choice you don't walk into a supermarket and it's packaged up lots of children when they buy their lamb chops have no clue where yes, they actually came exactly. from. Yes exactly. Um, so that's is there different. any point that you agree with here? At first, obviously, I was a bit like, this is kind of psychotic because, you know, this is the kind of way that you would treat a pet. Um, well, you did actually say anyone who names yeah. their turkey, anyone who goes onto that farm and does that is psychotic. Yeah, but obviously I disagree with the killing of animals, full stop. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I've thought about it and I think actually, in a way, it's good because I want people to be able to make a connection with these animals and realise that they actually you know, have souls and that they feel pain and that they're gentle creatures that mean no harm to us. And that maybe if people do make the connection, maybe they won't want to have these animals killed on their behalf so that they can eat them for Christmas or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Why are you calling for everyone to be vegans and not vegetarians? There doesn't seem to be any sort of middle ground here. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, I used to be vegetarian for a long time, most of my life. I grew up on a working farm, which a lot of people don't know. Um, and I used to be vegetarian. I became vegan just through education and... I found out that the dairy industry and the egg industry is really cruel. I didn't realise that, um, you know, in order to have milk, you have to have a baby cow, and then in order to take the cow from the from the milk from the cow, you have to take away the baby. So I found out that actually the dairy industry is extremely cruel and it kills millions of calves every year. In uh, in 2016, one percent of the British population was vegan. Uh, yeah. And uh, and now uh, in yeah. April, I think it was 3.5 million, seven percent. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, people are drifting away yeah, uh, away from yeah. meat through vegetarianism yeah. into veganism. So it's definitely happening. But it's uh, uh, the where people have a, a real um, dislike of the way it's being done is when yeah. you have a guy like like Matt, um, who uh, who's you know got his his business up and running, yeah. um, he's doing it as ethically, ethically as is possible. Mm -hmm. I know you don't accept I that. I don't think you can use but that. At the ethical, same, but, yeah. but at the same time, you've got people spray painting uh, the front of his yeah. shop, 100%. the front of his business, yeah. and also calling him a murderer. And mm. he's had death threats. Do you agree with that? Um, I don't agree with violence um, in any form, really. Um, this is kind of why I'm vegan. Um, I mean, I'm sure some people get a bit carried away with their passion, emotion, whatever. I don't agree with it. But then at the same time, like, as a vegan, I get met with abuse from meat eaters all the time. Like, if I talk about veganism or whatever on social channels, I always get people sending me kind of abusive messages. So it goes both so ways. You, so I you're think. getting it in this, the, this yeah, sort of same respect think, because you are a vegan. I think vegan. it's a huge controversial topic at the moment and mm -hmm. it is relevant. As you say, a lot of people are making the change to be more compassionate. So I think that it does go both ways and, it, and it's a shame that that's happening. But um, I don't think it takes away from the fact that by being vegan, you are making a more compassionate choice. Final word to you, Matt. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think uh, I think I think there's if a vegan's going to target if a vegan's going to make a campaign and target anybody, I don't think a full s small farm shop in Devon that's trying to be inclusive to everybody and look after their animals in the best way is the is the right place to start. And it, you know, if Lucy if Lucy's going to make a decision, she wants to make it informed and educated, and then and then start in the right places. And criti criticizing a farm shop in Devon is not the right place at all. All right, we've got to leave it there. Thank you both. Thank you, Matt. Thank, thank you very much, you. indeed, Lucy. Thank, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.